trust. I like that aspect of things because that's what David knows. In the first verse here, that's exactly what David knows. He knows that nobody else, or at least he thinks, nobody else cares. Uh, you, you look at the verse 20 for a moment, and he says, I looked for someone to take pity, but there was none, and I've been for comforters, but I found none. Well, in that particular verse, he's looking to people. And he's looking to those around him. And he's saying, I, I, I'm looking for somebody to care. I'm looking for somebody to find comfort. Uh, and, he, and, 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 and all the people that are there, he says, he doesn't find it. I think about Job and his wonderful friends. And I'll tell you this. If you have friends like Job had, you won't need any enemies. Uh, and that's what David felt like. That, that's what his friends were like. And one of Job's friends even said to Job, why don't you just curse God and die? I looked for comfort. I found none. What you do to get in this mess? You know, that's what they told Job. John, in the book of Mark, the disciples asked uh, Jesus, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he's born blind? The idea that calamity comes because of what we do. God judges because of what we do. And anything bad that ever happens is because we've done something bad. That's what David's feeling. We come back to verse 16. And David turned to the one who had come. And I love that. Hear me, O Lord, for your loving kindness is good. David knows something here. He's not appearing or approaching God because he's saying, Hear me, O Lord, because I'm so wonderful. And he's not approaching God saying, Hear me, O Lord, because I'm the one that you just need to help. And he's not approaching God saying, hear me, O God, because I am perfect and all those other people are horrible. How, why is he approaching God? Look at it, what he says in, in verse 16. Your loving kindness, it's because of you, because you love me and you care about me. I like what he says, and, and it's a verse that we well, a lot of times just uh, apply to salvation. But he says, for God so loved the world. How much does God love us? How great is His love toward us? Uh, like what He tells us, you know, the very hairs of our head are numbered. He knows us that well, but He also loves us. He gave Himself for us, yes, in Jesus Christ. And the, uh, uh, Paul writes in Romans, he says, if he, did, if he gave us His Son, how shall He not with Him also freely give us all things? And I'm not talking about wealth and and things of that nature. He's talking about God is there for us. And when nobody else will listen, and when nobody else will care, and when everybody else says, you know, what, 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 what difference does that make? God is still right there. You know, I, I find it interesting. There are times that somebody might have a problem, and they might have, that's really affecting them. And they may come and they may talk about it. And you know, what your thought might be would be, that's, that's your big problem. But God understands. And God cares. And I like what he says. Hear me for your loving kindness. Hear me because of who you are. Hear me because of how great you are. Not because of something I have done. I like what he also says in verse 16. He says, turn to me according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Again, it's God's tender mercies. It's what God has. It's not because of something that we have. As you look at verse 16, you do not see David saying, God, I deserve this. You see David saying, God, because of who you are. Because of how great you are. Because of how wonderful you are. Listen to me and hear me. Uh, I, I like that as you, you see that, you also know God's going to hear him. And we also have that assurance that God's going to hear us. God tells us very, very carefully and very, very uh, thoroughly that he'll stick closer to us than a brother. 
And he tells us in the book of Matthew, and it's the Great Commission, and sometimes we gloss over this uh, little point. It says, Lo, well, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the age. God is always right there. God will never leave us. And when we come to Him and we begin to present something to Him, and we begin to talk to Him, you know what? He hears us. He hears us. You know, when He, when he says to cast all our care upon Him, it wasn't to just leave a message. When He says to come to that throne of grace boldly to find help in time of need, it wasn't, I'll get back to you later. How good would that do? It's because he's there for us. He wants us to come to him and he wants to hear from us. He didn't call us a friend to say, don't bother me. What type of friend would that be? David, as he's approaching God, He's approaching God knowing God is going to hear him. And knowing that because of who God is, he can bring this to him. We've all heard it said that God's not Santa Claus, which is true. And we've all heard it said that well, there's no atheist in foxholes. I don't know if that's true anymore or not. We've all heard it said that, oh, the only time people turn to God is when they're in trouble. But that's a good time to turn to God. You know, you know we've all heard it said, when all else fails, read the directions. That's a good time to turn to God. David, I want you to notice what he says in verse 17. I'm in trouble. You know, you know, he's turning to God because why? He's in trouble. He needs him. You know, we, we need to understand the fact that, that we need God every day. And, and we need to understand the fact that as we come to God and as we follow God, it, it's a daily following of God. It's not just a, a, you know, whenever times are hard or whenever times are difficult. But David, as he is coming to God, he says, I'm in trouble. I need help. I like that. He knows who can help him. You know, what good would it do to go to somebody who can't help? What good would it do to go to somebody who doesn't have the power to help? How much power does God have? Well, he tells me all power is given unto him in heaven and in earth. I have a God who spoke and created the universe. I have scientists today who are trying to figure out how it all got here. And I have a God who says, this is how it happened. Why don't you just kind of read the start of the story and understand it? You see, that's my God. And that's who David is turning to and saying, I'm in trouble. It's the one who spoke and here it all was. The one who says there isn't anything that was made that wasn't made except through him. It's the one who says, I know the thoughts and the intents of the heart. It's the one who says, I know you that personally. It's the one who says, it's his. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the King of Kings. He is the one that is in control of all things. And David turns to him and says, I'm in trouble. about that angel? <coughs> That's who David's turning to. He's turning to that angel's boss. And thought about the angels who spoke in the book of Isaiah and the place shook? That's who David's turning to. Not the angels, but to the one that they're worshiping. Thought about the death angel that passed over Egypt? That's who David's turning to. Not that angel but all the one that he serves. I'm in trouble. That's a good start for all of us, by the way. <laughs> all of us are in trouble. <coughs> Excuse me. We need God. 
David knows that he needs God. He needs Him. And I want you to notice what he says. Hear me speedily. I need you right now. Not tomorrow. Not next week. Not, not sometime in the future. I need you right now. And so I got prayer. Lord, give me patience and give it to me right now. <laughs> you know, uh, I... And I've thought about that several times this week because I'm trying to deal with a particular government agency. <laughs> yeah. Lord, give me patience and give it to me now. David's saying, I need help and I don't need you to just say, okay, I'll get to it later. I need help right now. Hear me speedily. Listen, I have a problem. It's about to happen. Ever been driving down the interstate and you only have time to pray, Lord, help? That's what David's saying. He's saying, I need it, and I need it now. You know, we have a God who's able to do that. That's why it's so important when he says, come that throne of grace that you might not find help in time of need, that it's not just leave a message. It's not, well, I'll get to you later. I need help. I need it now. I like as he comes. Here, here's what he's asking for. Draw near to my soul and redeem it. What's David asking for here? <laughs> he's not asking for great things to happen, is he? He's not asking for all kinds of you know, armies to protect him or things of that nature. He could have. And it would have been you know, something we may have thought about. But what he's saying here is, draw near to my soul. I want to have fellowship with you. I want you to be with me. What greater thing is there than that? You know, and all the things that happen, and all the disasters that happen in life, and all the problems that are there, what greater thing is there than this? To know God is with you. And regardless of what it might be, He's right there. What greater thing is there than to know He's right there? Draw near to my soul. Redeem it. Deliver me because of my enemy. Now, yes, he is asking for deliverance from his enemies, but the first thing he asks for is God to be with him. But it's interesting to me, as you look at the next couple of verses, you know my reproach, my shame, my dishonor. God knows us. How many of us deserve, keep that mind, word in mind, how many of us deserve fellowship with God? There's not a one of us that deserve fellowship with God. We are just like David. We have our reproaches. We have our shame. We have our dishonor. We have things in our life where we are sinners. And that's what he tells us, that we are all sinners. We all fall short of the glory of God. We all have these things in our life, that's a, that's a problem. And, and Paul even with, puts it this way. He says, the good that I would, well, that's not what I do. The evil that I don't want to do, uh, that's exactly what I do. So we all have these things in our life. So none of us deserve to have that fellowship with God. None of us deserve to have the, what, uh, what the, David is asking for here. We all have problems in our lives. But... David is saying, God, you already know all these things. You already know all these problems in my life. You already know these things. How well does God know us? Well, the scribes and the Pharisees, they were debating in their own mind about who can forgive sins. God only can do that. It's whenever they lowered that man through the roof and uh, Christ turned to him and said, your sins are forgiven you. And they're over there debating them amongst themselves in their own minds about what type of man says this. He says, let me tell you, just to prove that I can do it, rise up, take your bed and walk. 
He knew what they were thinking. The Word of God, he says, is sharp, it's powerful, it's, more, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It divides asunder the thoughts and the intents of the heart. God knows what we're thinking. God knows who, we're, who we are. Unlike it when our people try to decide well, what was their motive. God already knows. David says, you know my reproach, my shame, my dishonor. Reproach has broken my heart. I'm full of heaviness. But still, God is right there. We use a term for that. We call it agape love. What's that mean? Well, there's final love, which means I kind of like you. I'm kind of fond of you. I like what you do. I like the things about you. Maybe like the way you look and things of that nature. But it's not really a commitment of things. That agape love that God has for us is a love that is unconditional. It's a love where it says we love him because he first loved us. We get, give ourselves to him because he gave his all for us. And he loves us no matter who we are or what we are, what we look like, what we sound like, uh, what we do. God still loves us. And the psalmist here, as he's talking about things, he says, you know me. You know my reproach. You know my sin. You know my dishonor. You know all about me. And yet, God, you love me. I like what he's saying there. I don't have to clean myself up first to come to God. I do not know how many times I have heard people say, as soon as I stop doing, then I've come to God. No, just as the psalmist is saying, just as the hymn says, just as throughout the Bible it says, we come to God just as we are. We come to Him with all of our problems. We come to Him and we say, Lord, here am I. The thief on the cross came to God just that way. He was dying because of his sin. He was dying because of what he had done. Society had said he was too bad to live. And he turns to Christ. He says, remember me when you enter your kingdom. And at that moment, right then, he was a child of God. And all the other things that he had ever done, he didn't have to go and fix them up first. He came to God just as he was. And David, as you look at him, as he's uh, uh, writing here, he's coming to God as he is. He's coming to God where he says, Hear me, Lord. I need your help, Lord. I need it right now, Lord. And he's coming to God, and he says, But God, you know all about me. You know my problems. And God isn't going to hold that against us when we ask him. Or when we come to it. It's interesting. People might. And that's the last part of this. Is people might. I look for someone to take pity in a lot of And for comforters to type now. Even though there was nothing there. As far as man was concerned. God was still there. As I look at that, I think about where we turn for help. We have a choice. We can turn to God, who can help. Or we can turn to people around us. And I like what the psalmist says, I found them. I look for comforters, but I found them. Our help comes from David puts it this way. I lift up my eyes under the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. And that's where we need to lift up our eyes. Not to what's around us, but up to the 
hills. I'm not talking about these hills over here. But up to the hills where, where our help comes. And our help comes from the Lord. We have problems, turn to God. We have difficulties, turn to God. Do we feel like nobody likes us? Turn to God. Do, is the world against us? Turn to God. He's there for us. And He'll never leave us, never forsake us. People will fail us. I, I, I guarantee you that. I, I like it when people say this to me. I won't go to church because I've been hurt in church. Well, if you've gone to church very long, you'll find you get hurt in church. You know, people are people. And, and uh, they hurt somebody, or, or you may not even know it, or somebody may hurt you, and they may not know it. People fail. God never does. We just need to turn to Him. Let's go. Good brother. Our Father, as we come in the name of Christ, we just ask you to be with us as we come towards the time.